What do you think is the single greatest photograph in history? Lots of beautiful and haunting stuff in here. How about a more recent, obscure one? Girl watching her grandfather cry at a Veterans Day celebration. This photo really jumped out at me the first time I saw it. The look on her face says it all. She just learned that the world is a whole lot bigger than she thought it was. Her eyes are full of sorrow and she looks like she's brimming with questions. Not sure if Op in that link took it or not, but it's very nice. I want to add the elephant's foot. It is a photo of a melted nuclear core after the Chernobyl disaster. It shows me to see that such a simple looking object is actually one of the most dangerous things in the world. After just 30 seconds of exposure, dizziness and fatigue will find you a week later. Two minutes of exposure and the body cells will soon begin at hemorrhage. Four minutes, vomiting, diarrhea and fever. At 300 seconds, you have two days to live, every time. I see the picture. It's like I can feel the radiation and heaviness in the air. It's crazy we have a photograph of this. The photograph looks grainy, not because the photography technology at the time in Soviet Union was behind. It is because the radiation affects the film. Surprised and I already see a harvest of death listed here. One of the first Civil War photos taken, one of the first war photos ever taken, and the first widely circulated one. This photo was the first time most people, with the privilege of not being on the battlefield, got a glimpse of what it was like. All right, look, I'm late to the party, but this is hands down the best photo ever taken. It's a picture by the lesser known Apollo 11 astronaut, Michael Collins. The picture contains the moon, the landing module with Armstrong and Aldrin, and the Earth. This is the best photo ever taken, because it contains every single human that has ever existed. Dead or alive, every single member of our species and its entire history is in this picture, except for Michael Collins, Australian soldier being beheaded by a Japanese soldier. Photo was found by an American soldier on a dead Japanese soldier. A hissing sound it must be the sound of spurting blood. Spurting from the arteries, the body falls forward. It is amazing, he has killed him with one stroke. The onlookers crowd forward. The head, detached from the trunk, rolls forward in front of it. The dark blood gushes out. It is all over. The head is dead white, like a doll. The savageness which I felt only a little while ago is gone, and now I feel nothing but the true compassion of Japanese Bushido. A corporal laughs. Well, he will be entering Nirvana now. A seaman of the medical unit takes the surgeon's sword and, intent on paying off old scores, turns the headless body over on its back and cuts the abdomen open with one clean stroke. They are thick-skinned, these keto, hairy foreigner, a term of opprobrium for a white man, even. The skin of their bellies is thick. Not a drop of blood comes out of the body. Christ, that's a hardcore s man. General Nguyen, shooting a Viet Cong prisoner, not only for its shocking portrayal of the harshness of war, but also for teaching us a lesson in learning the context behind the photo. The prisoner was caught cutting the throats of a South Vietnamese officer and his family, who were close friends of General Nguyen, and the general shot him in vengeance. Eddie Adams, the photographer, even said photos are only half-truths, and that they don't always explain the events that led to the moment. Adams would regret taking the Pulitzer Prize-winning photo, especially after the general received hate messages from those incensed at the photo's content. This photo, an SFW, is one of the only known photos in existence that shows the activities inside Auschwitz surrounding the mass execution of its prisoners. Photography in the camp was generally forbidden, even by the SS, but this was taken in secret by the Sonderkommando, a group of around 1,000 prisoners inside the camp who were selected by the SS to do all the dirty work, including disposing of and burning the bodies as they are in this photo. The Sonder Commando smuggled in a camera and took the picture from the doorway of a nearby gas chamber. They then managed to smuggle the film out of the camp in a tube of toothpaste. For me it is one of the most horrifying photos in existence and just shows what humans are capable of at their worst. Probably not the greatest but I'd like to share Fernando Aedi's kiss. Fernando Aedi was an Italian immunologist who passed away just a few days ago. This picture of him is extremely important because he's kissing a woman affected by HIV he did this in 1991 in response to an article falsely claiming HIV could be transmitted by kissing, in a time when popular knowledge about HIV and AIDS was extremely vague. This photo, just an empty bed and a chair beside it, on the bed, is a pillow with some dark stains. It's the bed Lincoln died in across the street from Ford's theater. 
The photo was taken right after the president's body was removed. The pillow is stained red with the blood that seeped out of his head, wound all night long. It's just soaked. If you ever have a chance to go here in DC, do it. It's pretty bone chilling. You can literally stand in this room and are an arm's length away from that same bed. Edit. Apparently the bed is now a replica and not the original. I was unaware of that. It's still an awesome place to visit though. There are some other original pieces of memorabilia in the museum I know. A bit of a tangent to make up for my misinformation. The bed that Washington died on at N.T. Vernon is the original and there are several other original pieces are there. It's one of the best museums I've ever been to. It's privately owned. They also have his actual dentures there as well. Spoiler alert, they aren't actually wooden. The whipping scars on the back of the fugitive slave named Gordon. Edit. For those interested in this man, Gordon Gordon or Whipped Peter, was an enslaved African-American who escaped from a Louisiana plantation in March 1863, gaining freedom when he reached the Union camp near Baton Rouge. He became known as the subject of photographs documenting the extensive scarring of his back from whippings received in slavery. Abolitionists distributed these cards to visit photographs of Gordon throughout the United States and internationally to show the abuses of slavery. In July 1863, these images appeared in an article about Gordon published in Harper's Weekly, the most widely read journal during the Civil War. The pictures of Gordon's scourged back provided Northerners with visual evidence of brutal treatment of slaves and inspired many free blacks to enlist in the Union Army. Gordon joined the United States Colored Troops soon after their founding and served as a soldier in the war. A lot of the best ones have already been linked here, so I want to share one of my favorites, this photo of a priest during the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. The contrast between the worn riot shield in one of his hands and the cross in the other, along with his religious scar against his respirator is something I found incredibly powerful. A friend of mine likened him to a real-life paladin. There's something so battle-hardened about the look in his eyes. Big J. McNeely, Los Angeles Olympic Auditorium, 1951 by Bob Willoughby edit, thanks for the silver, more info. It doesn't seem that the name of the song was documented while this photo was taken, but his audience reacted this way commonly during his performances. In his LA Times obituary, they quote a 1952 review of his concert, that he turned the event into a veritable hepka jive orgy when he came off the stage into the audience. In 2009, John Willoughby, the photographer said of McNeely, Big J stood in the middle of what normally would be the fight ring, playing his heart out, and the crowd was exploding around him. He created some sort of resonance with the audience. In some weird way, he seemed to be playing them. This picture of Emmett Till's mother Emmett was murdered at 14 and gruesomely mauled just for saying something to a white woman. His mother decided to have an open casket funeral so everyone could see what had happened. His death in 1955 was one of the major sparks of the civil rights movement. A lot of the best ones have already been linked here, so I want to share one of my favorites. This photo of a priest during the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. The contrast between the worn riot shield in one of his hands and the cross in the other, along with his religious garb against his respirator is something I found incredibly powerful. A friend of mine likened him to a real-life paladin. There's something so battle-hardened about the look in his eyes. Man who refused Nazi salute August Landmesser. August Landmesser, born 24, May 1910-1, Kiev 17, October 1904-4. Confirmed in 1949, was a worker at the Bloem plus Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany. He is known as the possible identity of a man appearing in a 1936 photograph, conspicuously refusing to perform the Nazi salute with the other workers. 2-3. Landmesser had run afoul of the Nazi party over his unlawful relationship with Irma Eckler, a Jewish woman. He was later imprisoned and eventually drafted into penal military service, where he was killed in action. Eckler was sent to a concentration camp where she was presumably killed. Edit. Thank you so much for gold. Dreams really do come true. In all seriousness, we should all try to be like August Landmesser a little more. Also, RIP Inbox. Such a great post and has been an introduction to so many awesome pictures and stories. I really like this one picture where workers in New York, I think, are doing construction on a skyscraper and they're all sitting on this giant steel beam that's just hanging hundreds of feet in the air. It's called Lunch Atop a Skyscraper. Edit. Anyone who is freaked out by this picture, or who likes it I think you should check out James Kingston on YouTube. 
Watch as one climb with bare hands and no tethers to the highest heights, it's unbelievable. A hissing sound it must be the sound of spurting blood. Spurting from the arteries, the body falls forward. It is amazing, he has killed him with one stroke. The onlookers crowd forward. The head, detached from the trunk, rolls forward in front of it. The dark blood gushes out. It is all over. The head is dead white, like a doll. The savageness which I felt only a little while ago is gone, and now I feel nothing but the true compassion of Japanese Bushido. A corporal laughs, well, he will be entering Nirvana now. A seaman of the medical unit takes the surgeon's sword and, intent on paying off old scores, turns the headless body over on its back and cuts the abdomen open with one clean stroke. They are thick-skinned, these keto, hairy foreigner, a term of opprobrium for a white man, even. The skin of their bellies is thick. Not a drop of blood comes out of the body. Christ, that's a hardcore-esque man.